the first chill of fall is starting to creep in around the village of High Rennick, and the leaves are just starting to turn. Pointage gets a knock at the door of the witch's cottage and opens it up to see a curious band of travelers, a woman in full plate armor, a tiny bird with a chef's hat, a curious creature with gold skin and a grumpy expression, and finally, someone he recognizes, a mathemologist he traveled with briefly on Troika. Dragag says, pointage, we have something important to discuss. May we come in? Hello and welcome to Sphere Hoppers. I am your host and storyteller, Royce Rosewood. We are continuing the adventures, not only of the crew of the Prosperous Performance, but also of Pointage, who has been the village witch of High Rannock for these past two seasons. This is going to be a big one. So here's a little bit of my thinking about what uh, we're, we're doing today. So when I originally started the Apothecaria campaign, I cut the time in half when I was thinking I was going to be able to get through a whole year in High Rannock. Um, And that turned out to be not the case. It sort of seemed like the pace was about three weeks per episode. And so rather than draw it out to a full eight episodes, I was originally kind of thinking four episodes. So I'm going to kind of stick to that. And then also just narratively, it seems like everything's drawing into a close, right? Pointage has solved the mystery of the witch. The conflict between the gods seems to be accelerating. He's maybe a little bit less safe. He's been exposed, right? He's chosen his side. And now the agents of the stag are aware of him and working against him. So it just seems like this is the natural place to wrap things up. So a bit of serendipity that the crew of the Prosperous Performance happens to arrive just now, but you know, it's my game and sometimes you just make things happen. Something to think that I think it's important to establish is that Dragog and Pointage don't know each other that well. They fought the frost bug together, then they traveled very briefly from God's Reign back to Troika, and then they parted ways. If you're interested in all of this, this is all in the Troika campaign. It's there if you're interested. That is where we will start. Pointage invites everyone into the small witch's cottage. Fila, the mountain lion, uh, Pointage's familiar, is, you know, curled up with a book and sort of gives everyone kind of a sleepy look and then returns to reading. (laughs) Krishna flies up to some sort of perch. Um, You know, there's maybe a stool or two that they all sit around. And Pointed says, Oh, Drog, I'm a bit uh, surprised to see you, honestly, this far away from Troika, but what can I do for you? And Drog says, When we parted ways, we split up the treasure that we had found in the lair of the Frostbug, and that included three orbs, Items that I now know are much more powerful and important than simply precious baubles. They are the orbs of Raoria, and they are used to access the sphere of the gods. And when we parted ways, you had one. Do you still have it? Pointage looks over, you know, he's got shelves. Maybe he's put it up on like a little bit of a display. It's pretty, right? It's got like a galaxy swirling in it. And Pointed says, yes, uh, here it is. Um, it started making a very soft music. And Dragog says, yes, uh, that means the time to use them and to find the Sphere of the Gods is approaching. Pointed is saying, well, what, uh, what are you asking? And Dragog says, well, we are trying to collect them. We have one, and Zamzis, the Goose peacemaker pulls out one, and yes, it looks exactly the same. Can you help us? And Pointed says, well, I don't mean to be a stickler, but this was given to me as part of the spoils in the lair of the frost bug. And additionally, I'm in a bit of a bind at the moment. I, I might have made a couple of enemies while 
being the village witch here in Hyrannic, and there are some things that, that I would like to take care of. And Dragog says, well, depending on what they are, we could help. And Pointed says, well, let me explain the situation. I came here to apprentice to the village witch. Her name is Alelix. When I got here, she was not here, and so I had to follow her notes, learn her craft on my own with her written guidance. I've met many of the villagers and creatures that live in and around Hyrannic. My predecessor is a follower of a being, a deity, called the Devourer. The Devourer is some sort of large snake-like creature who dug out a dungeon that is now known as Hero's Hollow. She was trying to do some sort of ritual. Uh, it's called the Sacrifice of Ink, but has not been able to complete it. She had gone into hiding, making people believe that she had left Hyrannic, but has actually been working in areas nearby. I have not seen her. I have not met her. The Devourer is opposed to another deity called the Stag. The Stag created a area here called the Cloud Isles, a set of floating islands. The stag is against the settlement of people here and is against their use of the natural resources for magical means. Additionally, there is a third player, the artificer, who has been building machines trying to industrialize Hyrannic. They, for I do not know who they truly are, are aligned with the Temple Shaker and have built a device called the Blade of the Temple Shaker, which I believe can be used to harm, if not outright kill, a deity. I have made my side clear. I have thrown my lot in with the Witch and the Devourer, and for this, the agents of the Stag have turned against me. And Suvara perks up at all of this. <laughs> She's like, oh, I wonder. Okay, I wonder if I could maybe get a badge. Dragog says, what do you need to do? What are you trying to do? And Pointed says, well, I have not been able to make contact with Alelix, but I believe I have what I need to perform the sacrifice of ink. And he goes to some luggage. The witch sent this back. I originally believed that it was a ruse, that she was using this to throw people off her scent, but... When I opened it up, I realized it had all the ingredients and materials I needed to perform the sacrifice of ink, a ritual that will, I believe, empower or perhaps summon the devourer. But I will need to do this uninterrupted, so perhaps you could protect me while this happens. And Dragag, Suvara, Kristen, and Samzis look to each other and say, we could certainly try. So that is what we are going to do. Originally, the ritual that Pointage had found was sort of near the cottage, but I think maybe that was like a practice ritual, or maybe Alelix had set that up to kind of show Pointage, you know, this is kind of what it looks like. But it makes more sense to me that the ritual would be done in or near Hero's Hollow, as that was, at, at least at one time, the dwelling place of the Devourer. So that is where we are headed. Okay, so that is our scene setup. Now we are moving away from our apothecary procedures and moving back into the procedures that we were using for Between the Skies and the rest of the Spearhopper's campaign. So as we set up the scene, we are going to roll our die of fate and see if there is any other element that comes to bear on the situation. A six, an inter-team event. Some sort of conflict or shared moment between members of this team. We'll put pointage in slot five, and we'll roll two six-sided dice to see or who this issue is between. Oh, so I rolled Dragog twice, which means this is going to be an issue between Dragog and everyone else on the list, and I rolled a plus, so this is a positive event. Dragog gathers everyone up and says, thank you to each and every one of you for coming with me on this quest. I know you are all here for different reasons, and I know that we have suffered losses. But I believe that we are on the track of a truly profound discovery. Let's go help this little winged dwarf with a ritual. Pointage gets set up. They have the ink and they have the materials uh, that they gathered in the luggage and they're setting it up and around. And the rest of the team is 
standing watch. So the question is, do the agents of the stag come to interrupt this ritual? They've got a bead on pointage. They were trying to stop Alalix from performing this ritual. So it seems nearly certain to me that the stag would send some sort of interrupting force to stop this ritual. So that, that is a 49. So yes. I'm just going to make a list of everything we know. So we've got fey and forest creatures. We've got the albatrosses, the speaker, the giant. We have the stag itself. And then there are probably people that we've met who we are not aware of their true alignment. So we'll put mystery. So I'm going to go ahead. There's six items here. Uh, we'll roll two dice. That is who we see. All right, five and two. The stag itself with its albatrosses. <laughs> Night is falling. Pointage has got the squid ink. The four other members of the party have formed sort of a barrier. This rainbow bridge comes down <laughs> from the cloud aisles and descending down is this just magnificent, brilliant stag. It's enormous horns, ivory colored skin, and then, you know, these birds with these you know giant wings flying and they all come down and the stag says, pointage, which I must ask that you stop this ritual. Pointage says, no, you don't want people to use the materials available to them for magic, but I've seen firsthand how magic can help people, can heal people. I've spent too much of my life destroying things, and now I've had an opportunity to give back, and you want to stop me. No, no. And the stag says, that is unfortunate. Ever since this place was settled, the humans and other creatures who have come have taken and taken, using magic for their own means, disrupting the natural flow of energy. Magic should not be, and I cannot allow you to possess it. I'm wondering if Suvara, seeing this brilliant creature of light, is like, are we on the right? side here? This creature called the Devourer in this cave that seems sort of dark. And then there's this brilliant, beautiful thing. I point it says, I struggled with this too. It all depends on whether you believe people should have access to magic. If you want a true enemy, Stag, look to the Artificer who's building machines and tracks all around the lake. That is your true enemy. And the stag says, yes, I will deal with him as well. It seems like a combat to me. Question is, how many of these albatrosses are there? There are two of them. Okay, flanking on either side. Here's what I've rolled up. The albatrosses have a skill of six, so that's not too bad. They have initiative of three, because I'm imagining they are pretty capable and intelligent. They have a stamina of 10, and they have an armor of two. Imagine they have some sort of celestial protection. They deal damage as axe. So I'm imagining that their claws are quite strong and formidable and maybe also their beak. I don't think the stag would demean itself to like actually participate in this combat. So it's going to kind of hang by and let the albatrosses do their thing. Um, but we'll see depending on how things go. Pointage is going to be trying to do this ritual. So at the end of the round, when we draw an end of round card, we will have pointage to a skill test to see kind of how much progress they're making. To start our imagining, our heroes are standing in front of this cave. Pointage is in the cave performing the ritual, and there are two albatrosses up in the sky, and the stag is further back. Who's up first? Oh, it's the end of the round, which just means that Pointage gets an immediate skill use. So I've given him a skill of herbalism at rank two to represent everything that he's learned so far. So he's going to test herbalism. So he needs to roll under seven. All right, that's a three. So he has made a success. Um, so he's off to a great start. He just immediately gets into it. He's using all of the magic that he's learned. He's got this wand and is putting that all together. That is great. Do we want to say that maybe he needs th three successes? And he's already started with one. Yeah, sure. What's next? All right. An enemy comes down. Albatross swoops down and attacks. 
Ooh, they're going to attack. One, two, three, four. Two, they're going to attack Suvara. Bad choice. So Suvara is going to be using sword fighting. So Suvara will get a plus one. All right, so Suvara gets the hit, deals damage with her sword. Six damage. This albatross swings down and bears its talons, and Suvara takes a swipe with her sword and says, I'm so sorry, you're such a beautiful creature of the gods, but this is where I'm at right now. Who's <laughs> up next? Suvara. Oh, but does not get this one. Albatross is going to be able to swipe back at her. Oh, okay. Oh, well, I forgot about armor. Okay, so Suvara takes two damage, and the Albatross actually takes only four damage. The Albatross wheels back around, and Suvara's gonna take another swipe, but the claw, you know, maybe rakes across her armor, and Dragog comes up. I think the problem is that the, uh, the Albatrosses are flying. He does have this box of addictive chocolates that he got from the Stygian Library. He's gonna, like, toss out some chocolates and see if he can distract or like bring one of the albatrosses down. Does that work? I mean, these are like celestial beings of the gods. That seems very unlikely to me, but we'll try it. So roll under a 25. 64, nope, he tosses these chocolates out to try to lure an albatross down to the ground, but the albatrosses don't even pay attention. They're not interested in those kinds of things. The enemy goes, so I think this other one, let's see who it goes for. Two also goes for Suvara. Okay, so Suvara has like made herself a target. So this other albatross comes in and it's a very close, but she gets this one. So she gets the hit with her sword. All right, that's a four minus two for the armor, six damage on the other one. So this other albatross swoops into this you know, beaconed <laughs> this woman in this shining armor and comes, but Suvara slices her sword across and says, please stop attacking me. Just, just, just go away so we can do this ritual. You're so beautiful. <laughs> Zamzies is up. All right. Zamzies has the eye beam. And so we'll try to blast one of the albatrosses with the eye beam that's Eight skill of eight versus skill of six, so Zamzies will get a plus two on this one. Going for the let's say the the more injured one. Right, that'll that'll hit. All right. So for damage, we roll the one. Okay, so minimum one. So that's three damage. Zamzies fires off this eye beam, boof, and singes the feathers of this albatross. Dragog. Could it be that that one that just got hit um, is now has sort of fallen low enough that Dragog can take a swing? Let's call it likely. 57? Yes! Okay, so Dragog is able to come up and take a swing with his Astrolabe. So he's got a skill of 8 versus the 6, so he's got a plus 2 on this one. Oh, but he does not get the hit. The Albatross will get a hit on Dragog. Doing two damage. So Dragog comes up to this albatross that's just been singed and is now kind of closer to the ground and swings with his astrolabe, but albatross you know, rakes its uh, talons across Dragog's face. All right, the enemy goes. Uh, so that one's going to attack Dragog again. And, oh, but Dragog gets the hit this time. All right, five minus two is four damage. That's gonna be enough to take this one down. So he's, you know, he's mad now. He's just been <laughs> raked across the face. And so he takes his extra leap and swings it down on this albatross and it just burst into this like cloud of like shimmering sparkles. The stag who's kind of standing back aloof looks unhappy. Right. Kristen is not a fighter, but can fly and has learned a little bit of tactics. So I'm going to have Kristen test tactics. And if he can succeed, that'll give the next person who goes some sort of bonus or advantage. All right. Nope. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's a 12. That's a fumble. That's actually going to be 
bad advice. So whoever goes next is disadvantaged. So Kristen says, try to hit him in the claws. I think the claws are the weak part. The enemy goes. Uh, this enemy is the one who's still attacking Suvara. So we're going to give Suvara a minus two on this one for the bad advice. Total, she'll have a minus one. She still does. Okay. So she hits up the claws. All right. But does not very much damage. Only well, does four damage. So she tries to strike at the claws, but the claws are really strong. And her sword kind of bounces off, but it does shake the albatross somewhat. Who's next? Enemy. Going against Suvara, who's now back up to her proper bonus. Oh, but doesn't hit this one. All right, so the albatross gets the hit on this. All right, minus Suvara's armor. Suvara will take two damage. This albatross now flies down, is flapping her wings and, you know, clawing at Suvara and just going. All right, Suvara is going to strike back. The albatross rolled double six. That's a mighty blow. So that'll be double damage. The five minus three for the armor. That's so two, so that's still only four damage. So we're right down to 13. This one just like totally comes at Suvar, so maybe pushes her to the ground and just uh, kind of stuns and shocks her for a moment. All right, end of round. All right, so Pointage is testing his herbalism. Try to roll under seven. Right, hit seven. Okay, got that second success. Okay, so Pointage is able to, starting to start the ritual. The, we see the ink float and move and kind of gather around in a circle. All right. New round. All right. Another enemy up. Still beaten on Suvara. It's going to get another hit on Suvara. All right. Just does the minimum of two damage. It's just swiping at her. All right. Suvara. Striking back with her sword. Mm, doesn't get a hit. The albatross is going to get another hit. And that's another two damage. It's just kind of death by a thousand cuts on Suvara over here. She's down to nine stamina. Enemy goes again. And Suvara will get the hit this time. All right. Four minus two. Two, so that's six damage. Takes out one of the albatrosses. And that... Again, bursts into this cloud of sparkles. Is this what she has to do for the badge of the stag? Defeat an albatross? We'll call it 50-50. Maybe for it. No, absolutely not. Uh, though that, of course, makes the stag very mad. I think maybe uh, she is now long no longer eligible <laughs> for the stag's badge. Okay, so they've defeated the albatrosses, which means now the stag must enter the fray. Now the stag is a god uh, and so i imagine is quite powerful so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna i'm gonna roll up some stats for the stag roll twice for each one and take the higher uh, because this is a very all right this is the stag they have a skill of 12 they have an initiative of three they have 28 stamina they have four armor and they deal damage as a large beast now the party does not have to defeat the stag, although that would help. They just have to survive long enough for Pointage to get one more success on the ritual to summon the Devourer. Keep going. Dragog rushes up and takes a swing at the stag with his astrolabe. That's eight versus 12. The stag has a plus four in this combat. So the stag gets the hit. Dragog has no armor to speak of, and so takes 12 damage, taking him down to four. Dragog rounds up with his astrolabe, and the stag almost effortlessly just moves its antlers and just sort of shoves Dragog off onto the ground. Kristen. Kristen cannot fight, so he's going to go try to do some herbalism on Dragog, just to try to maybe heal. So roll under five. 
you know, Kristen's going to help the Greg, but, you know, the herbs are getting everywhere. And, uh, it's just a mess. All right. End of the round. Okay, thank goodness. All right. So, Pointage has to roll under seven to complete this ritual. Otherwise, we have to go through another round of combat with um, this god. Six. Okay. Pointage. It can feel the you know, the thrumming, the power of this ritual. The ink is swirling and forming shapes. And now it did say, we did learn that the devourer takes offerings of memories. So Pointage has to offer a memory to the ritual in order to make it work. And he is going to offer the memory of when he was newly sculpted, living in Diaprise, the attack of the robots and all the destruction that he witnessed, all that destruction that shaped him for hundreds of years as he lived, uh, he is going to give that memory away. He's going to let go of that memory. He doesn't need it. It doesn't serve him. And so he's, he's leaving it and he will no longer remember that or, or maybe where he came from he's giving up a part of his himself but a part that he no longer needs so he offers this memory to the devourer you know the world is is is, is shaking and then up from the tunnels right up from the caves comes this enormous well we know it's snake-like but what i think is it's actually a worm it comes out and it's got this huge mouth and and everybody has to kind of like scramble aside and so there's this huge worm and there's this stag and the worm is you know is is black and you know covered in you know dirt and and soot and you know it's got this huge mouth of the devourer right it's coming into collision with this you know brilliant white stag and they clash Right, and there's this huge explosion of energy that you know they're locked in combat. Um, rather than you know roll it out and roll up stats, uh, I'm just gonna roll this three sided die. I'm gonna do one for the stag wins this conflict, I'm gonna do two for the devourer wins this conflict. I'm gonna roll, th I'm gonna have a three for some other outcome that we don't know and can't anticipate. Let's just roll, see what happens. One, the stag wins this conflict. So despite all the power of the devourer and the summoning of this energy and its destructive memory, you know, they're they're locked in this in this battle. The stag's you know just very delicately leaps up on top of this giant worm and just you know rakes its antlers along its back and you know this dark oozing blood seeps out. The devourer, you know you know thuds down the stag just sort of steps gently down you know stepping on little platforms of rainbow does a lalix show up it seems very likely 60 yeah so then out of the darkness comes this uh, figure this witch imagine she's old and she's hunched you know and she's um, you know a bit bedraggled and pointed uh you know sees her kind of coming out of the darkness you know, the stag is approaching them it says all this struggle all this magic and for not the natural way of things is what continues it is only natural and there's you know this dark blood dripping from its antlers. Is Alelix able to do what she is planning to do? Let's call it likely. 86. No, she's not. So she pulls out like this long silvery blade and she leaps, you know, is trying to ambush the stag from behind. And the stag similarly just gores her with his antlers and she gets tossed to the side the stag says oh you've been trying so long and so hard to defeat me all of your allies all of your opportunities and it's all come 
to not. The stag steps back onto its rainbow bridge and goes up into the sky. Well, that was certainly uh, exciting and <laughs> unexpected. All right, well, we will continue the adventures of the crew of the Prosperous Performance uh, in Hyrannic and the conflict between these gods. The Devourer has been summoned and been defeated, but there are still other powers at play. And thanks so much for following along. Uh, if you're enjoying this, please like, subscribe, and share. I really appreciate it. This is Science Fantasy Awesome, and you are awesome.